my name is uh, Auslug. I go by uh, Awa also, that works uh, as easier internationally. And I'm the uh, founder and executive director of uh, Stelpur Rokka. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm very honored to uh, spend the next hour here with you. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we empower youth through music. And maybe more specifically, um, how we think that creating safer spaces could be one of the key strategies towards uh, um, a more diverse uh, organization and uh, more uh, youth involvement and youth leadership at Serperoca. And it's a continuing practice that we uh, work on and the work is never finished but uh, we want to in this workshop maybe start by giving a brief uh, introduction to Stelperoca, the organization and the work that we do and our uh, methodology. I'd like to give a, a brief introduction of Stelperoca uh, and our methodology and then maybe spend a little bit more time looking into uh, a case study, which is our biggest project to date, which was an international rock camp, a week long camp that took place in Iceland uh, two years ago with a uh, hundred participants, both youth and volunteers and uh, uh, 12 partner organizations from 10 European countries. And uh, we just want to share what we were working on there at that big camp in order to create safer spaces. Just to give an idea uh, for how, how we approach these things in our organizations. And then I want to leave a lot of time in the end uh, for us to break out into smaller groups. Uh, with a goal being to identify concrete steps to be taken towards safer spaces in our organization so that we can work towards greater inclusion uh, and a more and, and cater to a more diverse group of, of youth with diverse capabilities and, and uh, diverse opportunities and, and work towards greater uh, youth uh, leadership in our projects. Um, so that's kind of the outline, and uh, my I hope I, I don't spend way too much time talking. So just stop me if I <laughs> if I'm going overboard. Feel free to jump in and and uh, and let me know. Um, so um, let's start by talking a little bit about Stelpur Rocka or Girls Rock Iceland. Uh, we are going on our tenth year of programming right now. We were founded in uh, 2012 and Stelt is a volunteer run nonprofit. It's a feminist nonprofit. Uh, we uh, work uh, according to the values of intersectional feminism. And our, our uh, definition of intersectional feminism is that in everything we do, we try to be aware that we are in uh, bedded in, uh, in a net web of uh, intersecting and overlapping systems of oppression. So we talk a lot about gender justice in, in Girls Rock Iceland, but we are also aware that our participants and ourselves, we face a lot of uh, hurdles and are, and are oppressed in a lot of ways that uh, have not only to do with gender, but to do with uh, race, ethnicity, uh, disability, uh, language, uh, background, uh, economic status, and, and so on. Um, we work to empower girls and trans boys, gender, queer, and intersex youth through music and also through social justice education. So to give an example of how we run our programs, um, we run programs all year round in Iceland. Um, but our biggest programs always happen in the summer. And these are five day long uh, music camps where we get uh, a big group of youth, uh, 30, 35 participants, and we give instrument lessons. We teach vocals, bass, guitar, um, keyboard, drums, electronic music. And then the participants form bands 
uh, with with youth that they've never met before. They're just coming in and meeting in the space. And then they have a week to write a song, original song, and rehearse the song. And then they perform it live in front of a big audience at a concert at the end of the week. So it's a very intense uh, musical experience where participants are playing in instruments that they've maybe never played before and they're collaborating with people they've never met and, and uh, writing lyrics, writing songs, but also participating in workshops that often have a social justice uh, theme. Um, like activism workshop, how to use your voice to uh, to work on the issues that you're passionate about in society. Uh, we also have visits from partner organizations that educate us about the issues that they're uh, working on. Um, so we kind of weave these two strands together. But the uh, but the empowerment aspect of the program is that we are encouraging people to express themselves and uh, and be creative and we come from this punk diy uh, background so the way that we approach music is that we are trying to combat perfectionism uh, we want people to just go for it make mistakes scream shout get on the stage even if they have never touched their instruments before and just own their own experience and um, try something new and, and break out of the you know comfort zone and we don't believe in hierarchies that somebody comes in as an experienced trained music teacher to give music lessons but we're all just doing it together and learning from each other so we strive to be pretty non-hierarchical in the space um, so the DIY uh, spirit uh, can be very joyous. And as we all know, joy can be a revolutionary force. So that's kind of what we are, are, are aiming for. Um, we recently opened up a space. We have a venue in Reykjavik now, so we're able to run year-run programs. And we are the only music uh, service providers uh, in Iceland that we know of that offer free and heavily subsidized programming because a cornerstone of our work is that we are financially accessible to uh, everyone. Um, and then we also are part of an international movement. It's called the Girls Rock Camp Alliance and there are I think over a hundred Girls Rock Camps now active uh, over the uh, all around the globe and quite a few in in Europe so that is kind of like a short introduction uh, to the organization and now I'd like to move on to uh, our biggest program to date our case study that we will present and that is the um, music empowerment mobility and exchange program that we have done this program twice now. Um, it was a partnership program between 12 organizations, uh, rock camp organizations in Europe from 10 countries. And uh, it, it, it was a week long uh, camp. First camp was in Berlin. And then a year later, we did a second camp in Iceland. Um, it was a huge undertaking. Uh, there were more than a hundred people, uh, both youth and they were participating, ages uh, 18 to 25, and also youth leaders and youth volunteers. Um, we split the camp into three different programs. Uh, the main program was um, what I mentioned earlier, uh, the rock camp, where participants form bands and they work in their bands for a whole week. And they write the song and, and perform the song on stage. But then we also had two uh, parallel programs happening at the same time. One program was a, a media uh, program where participants were learning about uh, 
video making and podcasting and they were filming the concert and interviewing people and uh, um, maintaining an, an Instagram uh, page. Um, and then the third track was uh, called the leadership track where we were um, working with young participants to empower them to become leaders and take on leadership roles within the rock camp movement. And so we spent a lot of time talking about project management and they organized the final show and um, uh, yes, took on the, like a, uh, roles, different uh, roles around the camp. Um, I'm gonna try now to show a little bit of a video. 100 people from 10 countries and uh, 3,000 meters of cable. cable. <laughs> about creating music, empowering, giving you confidence. We don't just play music, but they have um, these different workshops yeah. about uh, everything. Like not only music, but uh, there was one about how to create a workshop. We win with tonlist and scoping. Samsdarsbreytinga Get uh, all these people are very, very different and it's not hard, it's actually really interesting to uh, see different kind of cultures like get together and be in this one community. It's it's really amazing. I I wouldn't be doubtful at all of saying that these camps are life changing. Uh, there was a bit here in Icelandic. Uh, we first heard from Eithu, the, the project coordinator of the camp, saying that we work uh, with music as a way to empower people to um, become leaders and work towards social change. And then we heard from Embla, our accessibility manager, and she was talking about how we really emphasized access to the camp because there is a, a sometimes this problem in youth work that um, access is kind of left out to the last minute and then um, participants, uh, it happens that the project becomes uh, less inclusive and less diverse as a result, which is maybe a good segue into the main focus of, of the presentation. Um, our work towards creating safer spaces at this particular camp. And um, let's see if I can do it. Yeah. Uh, so just want to start by saying we, we have these core values uh, listed uh, in our camp and all our international uh, partner camps share these values. We want to offer programming to all girls, trans boys, gender queer folks, and intersex youth in Iceland, and strive to support and empower a diverse group of participants, regardless of musical experience, gender expression, ability, economic status, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religion, or other factors. However, uh, just because we have these core values and guidelines, ingrained into everything we do doesn't mean that they uh, uh, always are uh, put into practice. And it doesn't mean that we are actually always successful in including uh, 
uh, a diverse group of participants. It is a continuing process, constantly evolving, and constant work, and it's a task that never gets finished. As that Baroque as an organization is an entirely different place now than we were uh, two years ago or five years ago. Um, youth that has fewer opportunities, youth that is uh, vulnerable or marginalized, uh, they don't automatically show up to youth programs, even though we have a good statement of our core values, because many don't assume they're welcome. And if they do show up, we can't be sure they will feel welcome or will feel empowered at all. Uh, because uh, there are so many, uh, many youth, as we all know, that face barriers, social barriers, uh, mental, physical, that might not even be visible to us as uh, organizers coming from our particular place of privilege. So maybe I'd, I'd like to say first, kind of the base from which we were working towards our core values is that we, um, we do have uh, a good diversity in the volunteer and uh, leader group when it comes to international projects like this, because we are uh, many different European organizations that all share these values. So we are uh, meeting together in Iceland, uh, people from uh, 10 countries that come from different backgrounds come from different societal positions um, and each partner organization brings with them a group of youth that they have specifically invited that they ha they uh, wanted to include in this work. So there was this idea of trying to be inclusive from the start in, in who gets to go and who gets to have this experience, both in terms of leaders and participants. Uh, and that's maybe where the value in international collaboration lies, that um, um, in international projects, we, 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 um, uh, we do by default get a very uh, diverse group of, of people. Uh, and we also had the advantage of working with the universal language of music and the creative process. And music can be a very inclusive uh, method of empowering people because it is a universal language with no specific rules, uh, endless uh, opportunities uh, can be uh, extremely accessible. Um, and um, the, field is, the music field is ripe for creating a positive learning environment where people feel they can be themselves and learn on their own terms. And in our opinion, the DIY ethic and, uh, is particularly uh, well suited for uh, offering an, an, an inclusive experience. So it's a good base to build on. But what I would maybe want to spend some time with is uh, the importance of thinking about the practical details. Uh, in terms of providing safer spaces. And I'm not an expert on this. We're always learning and no one organization knows everything. We um, have made a lot of mistakes down the road. So that's why I have here a picture of a very long <laughs> winding road. But we're gradually building on our experiences and that's what I want to share now. And some things we feel very confident about and other things we're still working on. Um, and with that in mind, youth involvement, uh, I use the language of youth inclusion and involvement, and it can mean different things to different organizations. To Serperrocca, it meant being as accessible as we, as we possibly could, uh, so that we could have a diverse group of participants uh, enter our programs. It also meant that we were able to empower youth to become leaders within the movement. And I know that youth inclusion and involvement means different things for each organization. Uh, I maybe, how am I doing on time? <laughs> Do I have like a few more minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it, go for just, it. Just to run through these practical steps. Um, our participants, 
dealt with issues such as mental health issues, anxiety, autism, physical disabilities, uh, faced societal hurdles because of their gender identity or gender expression. They came from families of low income. So uh, we try to put a lot of thought into the practical details of how things can go smoothly because a week long rock camp is a very intense, very intimate, frightening experience for many. And uh, people bring with them issues from home, even political issues, uh, that don't feel safe at home or don't feel safe abroad. Uh, maybe some participants are feeling a safe and sense of belonging for the first time. And uh, we have to be able to meet these needs in response to situations that might arise. And for us, the most important things was to have an extremely clear roles and responsibilities of all the leaders. And with leaders, I mean the te instrument teachers, band coaches, media workshop leaders, um, national group leaders, uh, organizers, show organizers. So in this particular project, we had a very high leader to participant ratio. And that kind of is, tends to be the case with most of our camps, uh, maybe unusually high in terms of uh, youth work. We had um, 60 participants, but almost 30 leaders or, or youth leaders. And we um, tried to make sure we had uh, professionals during preparation and on sites and professionals meaning social workers, counselors, accessibility managers and personal assistants. We had an advanced planning visit where we uh, analyzed the, the camp site according to uh, different needs, um, where everybody was sleeping, how accessible the stage was, what were the uh, bathroom situation in terms of trans inclusion, um, are, where are the workshop happening, is there an elevator, can everybody get to the dining room, uh, where are relaxation rooms? Where are quiet spaces? Um, pretty detailed mapping of the facilities. And uh, we also tried to make sure that everybody could have access to the project management, that the, all the files were open access on Google Drive so that there was no, um, no meetings that happened that weren't um, uh, recorded and, and, and meeting minutes were accessible to everyone. Um, and in our context, it's important to remember that most our volunteers are not professional youth workers. They are musicians, they are activists. So many of them have never um, supported youth to be away from home for uh, a week. So that was a, a lot of uh, extra, uh, and many of them needed support to be leaders in that sense too. So that's a lot of uh, unknown, unknown variables and conflicting, conflicting needs. So I guess we we uh, we tended to put most of our uh, planning focus on uh, planning the structure of the program. And we had an advanced planning visit where we were uh, had leaders from the participating organizations meet in Iceland two months prior to the project to um, go over our safety and uh, plan. Um, so a few more practical details I wanted to share uh, in our efforts to create safer space is we had a health and safety team at the camp. Um, we had an Icelandic counselor that uh, was the contact person to local services and authorities in case of emergencies. We had uh, a social worker uh, from the London camp. And I'm glad that you saw in the video, uh, she was our accessibility uh, manager. And we offered counseling sessions throughout the camp with two counselors that had specific experience in identity issues and racism. And um, we also made sure uh, every person that 
I requested a personal assistant, got a personal assistant. And within each uh, country group, there were language mediators. And each group uh, from each organization also had a group leader that was in charge of uh, relaying information to the group. Um, a few words about our particular goal, which was to make uh, work towards making youth feel safe to take on leadership roles. Um, we wanted to, to kind of have youth feel like they were um, part of the decision-making team, that they were shaping the project as it was happening, not just participants that were uh, participating in the um, organizing track of the camp, but everybody that was interested. And that involves a lot of transparent project management to make sure everybody is clear on timeline, everybody knows exactly what their role is and their work cap package, that um, practical knowledge such as how the project is funded and how next projects might be funded is presented openly in workshops, uh, how management tools like Trello and these online tools are presented to youth as a way to effectively manage a project like this. Um, but also keep in mind that, you know, uh, youth are growing into their roles and we have to relegate responsibilities according to that. And also keep in mind that, you know, success looks different to each person that takes part in a giant uh, project like this. Uh, success can look like, yeah, getting up on stage and performing that uh, guitar solo or it can look like you know feeling up for being social during the after party and and daring to dance and or it can feel like uh successfully communicating to your group what the what the plan was for the day so we were trying to be very mindful that uh, everybody is coming into this camp with their uh personal personal goals um Oh, I just a shot to give you a minute more, maybe. Thank you very much. I think we're almost um, done. So the reason I wanted to uh, focus on these um, practical uh, details, it is because it's our sincere belief that the more work we can put in to provide safer spaces, the more successful we are going to be at supporting a more diverse group of people uh, to, to come to our projects and, and feel uh, safe. And uh, it also works really well to not try to do the whole thing by yourself because no one organization has all the expertise. So we reached out to many different organizations in order to help us develop protocol and support systems. Uh, we worked with the Red Cross, the National LGBT Association, and place chairperson of TAPU, which is a intersectional uh, feminist disability uh, activism network, uh, and more a host of other organizations. Uh, so we were continually checking in with our partners about, you know, you language uh, around uh, trans uh, wordings, uh, safety protocols for you know, different situations that might arise, things like that. So it's it's important to feel like you're not trying to invent the wheel on your own because there's a lot of expertise out there. Um, and maybe if we boil it all down to a simple strategy, I'd say the strategy for making safer spaces is communication. Uh, constant communication throughout. Um, I think either our project manager listed here that she had 42 Excel sheets going at one time uh, and sent uh, 1200 emails. <laughs> that might sound a little bit excessive for a camp where people are mostly playing music, but we believe that the result was that uh, people 
felt safer as a result. Um, yes, I think maybe that is most of what I wanted to say, give these practical details and in the context of our big camp.